One of the more interesting games during the latest Nintendo Direct Mini was a game called Vigor, and really nobody seemed to be talking about this game besides me. At first glance it kind of looked like a PUBG clone, but after researching it I learned that it was actually pretty different and honestly sounded a bit cooler. A closed beta for the game was announced which I signed up for, but then the company behind Vigor reached out and asked about doing a sponsored video to which I said yes. I mean I was going to play the game anyways right? Might as well secure the bag. So what is Vigor all about and is this new free to play Nintendo Switch game worth checking out? What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you stick around till the end of the video for a special announcement. But without any further ado, let's talk about Vigor for the Nintendo Switch and why this game may be your latest Nintendo Switch addiction. So the setting of Vigor takes place in 1991 and Europe has been essentially destroyed by a nuclear war. Norway remains one of the last areas in the region that survived and you play as an outlander, essentially one of the survivors from this. After you customize your character, your goal is to rebuild your house by gaining supplies which you get by playing in-game. After you survive in the game, all the supplies you have are brought with you, and you can upgrade and craft various things such as a plethora of guns, ammunition, and medical equipment. You are also trying to expand your base as well with these upgrades, and putting supplies towards things like that will also unlock more things that you can craft and cut down on crafting time. Now while Vigor is free to play in the beta, there's a battle pass system that you can access via crowns in the game. Crowns can be acquired by using in-game currency that you purchase in the final build of the game, or just by leveling up and attaining crates that are unlockable in the game so you don't necessarily have to buy the crowns. The full version of Vigor is launching this summer, and there will actually be a Founders Pack edition that will get you some custom items, $40 worth of additional crowns, and earlier access to the game before the free to play version is released, and it's available for $20. Now the game originally released on the Xbox One, and the Switch version will have all of the content such as an updated battle pass, playing with friends, leaderboards, and even cross-platform play with Xbox One owners, which is really cool as well. So essentially the beta is a taste test to what the game is all about, and the beta is running from April 9th to the 16th. Now honestly, explaining how Vigor plays is kind of interesting because it's a very unique game. So instead of just doing my normal spiel, I've actually decided to do something a bit different. I've been recording all of my gameplay footage from playing Vigor, and I've highlighted some of the different ways to play the game in this footage. So I'm basically going to show you guys how to play this game and the sorts of different styles you can implement while playing it. So the first style here we're seeing is the Sneaky Pete style. Basically, I just wanted to get into this match and get some different sorts of materials for my base. I didn't want to kill anyone, I didn't want to encounter anyone, I just wanted to get some different materials to craft different things in my base. So I'm looking around here and I actually find this picture. Now this picture is basically showing me an area of the map where I can find a large deposit of goods. Now in a standard match, basically what's happening is there's an airplane drop that ends up happening and this airplane drop is the main point of attraction but there are also other ways to get items from this game and one of them is by finding safes there's one safe in each match per game so finding a safe is almost as good as finding the item drop that ends up happening so what I basically did here was I stumbled across this safe and I decided you know what I'm gonna get what's in this safe and I'm gonna get in and get out one of the cool things about how Vigor plays is yes there are other people playing the game with you as well but you don't necessarily need to kill all these people sometimes it's better off just to completely avoid people. What ends up happening in Vigor is if you die, all of the things that are on your person end up going with you. So if you die, you lose everything that you've accumulated in that match, plus whatever you brought into that match at the start of the match. So it's definitely a very conscious sort of game because you have to play the game in sorts of different ways in order to sort of achieve what you want to achieve. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm waiting for this safe to end up opening. And once the safe is open, you can see Holy crap, we've got a lot of items. You can see I went into this match with literally nothing. No guns on my person, no anything, but now I have all of these items. So do I want to risk it by going out and finding different things in the map, potentially coming across a person and that person killing me? Or do I just want to get these items, get back to my base, start crafting stuff, put the items that I'm not going to use immediately away, and then just go into another match? I decided to just get the items and run. So here I am just taking different items. You can see some of the different crafting materials that I'm getting and all of these things are basically used in crafting things like weapons or crafting things for your base in order to improve your base. After I end up taking everything, I just decided to get that out of there. 
So now we're running back to the base. We're going to get to this little area up here on the map, and I'll be able to evacuate from the area, get all of these items, and I never saw a single person. So that's a really interesting way to play the game. The next way we're going to play is the Greedy Gus style, though. So in the greedy gust style, the airdrop is coming in and everyone is getting into the area where this airdrop is going to be. I see this guy over here and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take him out. Great. Now I have all the items that I that he dropped from killing him. So now I will have all these cool items here. But then, you know, something happens. Yeah, that didn't go too well for me. So the greedy Gus method definitely isn't the best method in the world if you want to get in and get out with all the items in hand. Next up, we have sort of a combination. Now, I was playing around, and I thought I saw someone. I thought I recognized someone on the map, but I wasn't quite sure. So I started looking around my environment. I noticed some doors were open, and then I see this guy. And I missed my first shot, but the second shot didn't miss. Now, what was he looking for in this area? Why, he was looking for the safe that's on the other side of this door. So whenever you get to the safe area, you want to open the safe area door by removing some of the panels on it, and then you basically just go to the safe area. Essentially, what I'm doing here is I'm simply just waiting for this safe to open so that I can get all the goodies in the safe and then get out of dodge so now that we have the safe open we see that it is full of beautiful weapons that I now have access to so I'm basically gonna take these weapons and like I said just leave the map by looking at the map and finding one of the exit points of it and just getting out of dodge so really there's so many different ways to play this game but this next one is definitely the best way to play it in my opinion so I'm sitting on top of a building here and I see a guy and I've been trailing him for quite a while now and I'm like, you know what, I want to take this guy out, I want to get whatever he's got on his person and then I'll just simply leave the game. So I'm sort of tracking him here a little bit, you know, I'm trying to see which door he's going to come out of, which area he's going to leave and then I will pursue him, sort of like a lion going after its prey, very cautiously, very stalkingly, but really just being very smart about it. So I see some movement going on here and I'm like, okay, okay, you know. There he goes out the side door there. He's going across the way I don't want him to see me because I don't think he sees me So I'm not gonna take a shot here instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply take my time now I did fire a shot there But that was just to scare him because that's another thing you can do because people there is no HUD system in this game So if gunfire starts coming down on you, you don't know where it's coming from There's no sort of HUD system as far as your health is concerned either It just sort of pops up in the bottom corner to let you know if you've been hit or anything like that So I like that about it if somebody shoots at you, you don't know where they're shooting from. So now we're going to stalk our prey. We're going to go up to this area here, and we're just going to kind of wait a little bit. We're going to wait for him to come out, and we're going to wait for him to make a move before we make our first move. You can see here there's a bunch of different terrains that you visit in this game as well. In the full version of the game, you'll actually be able to choose which terrain you want to play in. Now, here comes this guy. He's going around the corner here. I've got him dead to rights in this building. I know that this is a small barn. There's only one way out. So we're going to come around this corner. Bam! Bam. Bam, we take him down, we take him down. So now we take a look at what he has on his person, and he has a lot of stuff on him. And I'm like, you know what? This is great. This is all I need for this match. We're just gonna take these things, and then we're gonna get out of here. But then an interesting message comes across the announce system in the game, which is basically a little walkie-talkie, where somebody lets you know that an airdrop is coming. They basically alert you to when the airdrop is going to happen, and then you can sort of decide what you want to do with that. So I'm looking at my map here, and I notice that I'm going to somewhere be in the airdrop vicinity whenever this airdrop happens we then get the call over the radio that the airdrop is about to occur and I figure you know what I'm in the area anyways I might as well just hang out a little bit and I might as well see what's going on with this maybe I can pick off a guy or two and maybe get some cool stuff so I decide to wait in this area and that's where the fun really begins so the airdrop has happened as is indicative of the icon at the top of the screen that green icon means that the airdrop is here whoever gets this airdrop is getting a whole bunch of loot so i decided to run over to the airdrop area and i notice a person here and yeah i might have missed the first shot but you know what i won't miss twice we take out our opponent and now we've got an airdrop to look at so let's take a look at here let's go ahead and open up the airdrop which does take a little bit of time also adding in some strategy to the game and now we have this crate so now we're just going to get out of here we're going to run forest run and we're we're going to get to the nearest exit but of course what ends up happening whenever you acquire the airdrop is you then become a target on the map system and then people can see your location and know where you're going so things get very very tense 
And as I'm running, I notice that somebody is shooting at me and my life is quickly dwindling. I decide that, you know what, I'm going to be a coward and run because I want to keep everything I have on my person. Now this person is shooting at me like crazy. You can see the bullets flying around all around me and I'm just losing my mind. I just want to get to the exit. I want to keep everything in hand. And you know what, things got very, very dicey. Upcoming here, I take a shot and now my life is nearly gone. I am nearly dying. You can see it here. I'm just like, oh my God, I just need to get to the exit. I'm screaming at my television. I'm literally screaming that I need to get to the exit. If I can hide around this corner, maybe I can make it. And you know what, folks? I ended up making it. So this is obviously the God tier style to play the game. And honestly, that's my favorite thing about Vigor, are how many different types of play styles you can emulate in this game. You don't have to play it a certain way. It's not like there's a way to win at anything. It's just whatever you want to achieve in your mission. It's not something like a PUBG system where there's 100 people playing. Matches are much more intimate with just 8 to 12 people. There's a variety of different maps that you have as well. There's areas that are snowy. There's areas that are rainy. And then there's green, grassy areas as well. Constantly doing things like getting equipment and leveling up your character allow you to craft more things so it keeps you wanting to play it more and more it's a very just one more round sort of game and I really appreciate that about this version of the game now the one thing I will say that you've probably seen within the gameplay footage is that the graphics could definitely use some sharpening up they do look a bit muddy at times but like I said this isn't necessarily indicative of the final build of the game as it is still in beta like I said the final build of the game will be coming out in summer of this year and if you want to get early access to it plus some additional goodies you'll probably want to get that founders pack at 1999 but whether you want to pick up the founders pack edition or pick up the free to play version when it launches later on I definitely think a lot of people are going to be very addicted to this game it's very fun there's so many different ways that the game can play out as well and I think that keeps things fresh throughout so I want to give a huge thank you once again to the vigor team for sponsoring this video and like I said at the start I do have an announcement that I want to talk about I have some codes to the beta of this game if you did not get into the open beta access I have some additional codes that you can access to get into the beta now we're going to end this contest on Sunday the 12th so that way you have a bunch of days to get into it i have about five or six different codes so there will be multiple winners make sure you guys put in your correct email address and also your twitter handle if you follow me on social media and stuff like that i'll have a link in the pinned comment in the comment section down below to enter the contest you simply just have to be subscribed to the channel and there are additional ways to enter that contest as well it's very easy and all of the winners will be notified on sunday night at the end of the contest and your codes will be sent out so that way you have some time to play the game but what do you think of vigor does this look like a game you'll want to check out be sure to let me know in the comment section down below and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel like i said be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out other videos on the channel make sure you enter the contest by looking at the pinned comment in the comment section down below and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video i'm gonna go play some more vigor later